Okay, so I've shown the use of split key cryptography, the meta cryptography, that allows you to have a password vault and maintain security, even if one of your devices is lost. How do we apply that technology to sharing users' data? Hello, I'm Philip Pan Baker, and in this video, I'm going to be completing my set of four videos showing the use of the mesh using the existing tools today. So I've shown you the core technologies. I've shown you the meta cryptography, the UDFs, and the da data at rest envelope technology. And now I'm going to show you the user experience that we get from applying those systems. So this is going to be the final video of the use demonstrations. And after that, I'm going to be looking at how we apply the mesh to legacy technologies, in particular, the web, email, and SSH. And then the final video in this series will be how do we apply the mesh to the management of the mesh service itself. And hopefully that'll be interesting. So. How do we go about this um, group encryption? Well, the way that we start off is that Alice, who's going to administer it, creates an encryption group. So we have Alice here. And she has her mesh administration machine. And it creates essentially a completely new profile for this encryption group. And since it's Alice, we will call it Group W. So she creates Group W. And she binds Group W to a mesh service. So we have W at example dot com. OK. So there is a group W account created here. And the only thing that's really special about this account is that the service knows that it is a recryption group account. And so Alice can create entries for additional members. Now, if Alice is the only administrator of the group, and at this point, that's the only, uh, I've, you know, although we've got the math to support dual administrators, the protocols though aren't quite there yet. So if Alice is the only uh, administrator of this group, she has the private key W and she publishes the group key E to the W. So she doesn't need to be part of any of the deep recryption group but just because she's got the private key all on her own sub. OK, so how do we now go about adding users to this group? Well, we just reuse the contact mechanism that I already uh, described. Having accepted Alice's contact, Bob here already has Alice in his contacts database. So Alice sends Bob a contact request. Obviously, it's a four corner model, but let's just compress that down to three. And so Bob receives this contact request for group W. Do you want to join or not? And if Bob says yes, he's now a member of group W and can use the recryption key that has been created for him. So Alice, when she, she sends this invitation, creates, takes her private key W, creates a new key for Bob, so let's call that BW, and so that's just a random number, and then that is going to be encrypted under Bob's public key, and then the other half, the anti-Bob, is sent off to the service. 
And now the service is going to put this entry into the group membership catalog of Group W. And that's basically the, all that Group W consists of, a catalog showing the members of the group. And that is you know, sufficient to create a group encryption capability. So Alice can offer membership. She can take away the membership so she doesn't like, uh, she has a row with Bob. She can take that uh, capability away. And the other thing that we get here for, you know, pretty much for free is that this service can be monitoring how many times Bob is using the group encryption. And maybe the record that Alice creates has a little counter saying, don't let him decrypt more than 100 documents without, you know, without further instructions for Alice or without telling Alice. So, you know, maybe it's just an accountability infrastructure. So the nice thing about this infrastructure is that Alice gets really fine-grained access control. She can remove, revoke the access granted to Bob at any time. And she can do it in a way that, you know, is really quite uh, final and auditable. So now we can upload an encrypted document to the group. Bob can read it, but Eve can't and Carol can't. Not until Carol sends her an invitation to join the group. So Carol, when she joins the group, so this uh, document is already sitting on the service and it's already encrypted to group W. So imagine that there are 100 documents there. When Alice sends out the, the invitation to Carol, Carol immediately gets access to all the documents that were encrypted under group W. The, the key service, the mesh service, doesn't even need to know what all those are. It only needs to know about them when Carol tries to decrypt, which is really powerful in a work situation. Off the record, that is messages that disappear after a week, that's a really useful fe feature, but that isn't the only type of advanced encryption we need. In business, a much more common case is new member joins the group. We want to have them to have access to everything. Member leaves, we want to remove access from everything. Now, obviously, we can have a sidebar here about records retention and whether you want to have that off the record capability. And there are ways that we can mix that off the record capability in so that the ability to de decrypt the, the documents in group W goes away after a certain length of time. And to do that, we'd have to create a pile of uh, private, public private key pairs and agree in advance that we're going to delete those key pairs on a particular t at a particular time. And then those can be used as mix-ins to the encryption of the document. And we can end up with a document that cannot be decrypted after the 1st of August, 1945 or something like that. Okay, so now if Mallet joins the group, oops, we c he gets immediate access, but we can delete his entry and take him out again. So he will get complete access. Any documents he has decrypted while he was a member, well, he's going to be able to keep as far as the mesh is concerned. The mesh is a pure software layer. It, the mesh does not itself provide trustworthy hardware or trustworthy applications. Yeah, it's just the way it is, you know. If you want those capabilities, you'll have to layer them on top of the mesh yourself. So I mentioned that the key service can enforce a complicated policy. What's really great about this is we can take access control on from the principles that it started with in 1970s when Butler Lamson and co invented it for Multics and so on. Access control on Windows or Unix or whatever is all or nothing. And because of that, you end up having to 
be really loose in the permissions that you give. And the tendency tends to be that people get access to far too much because they get access to everything they might possibly need to get access to. Because adding additional access takes time. And failing to give them access to something they might need causes pain to somebody later on down the road. So it's easier just to give access to everybody in the company. And so you have these ridiculous situations where a person who's just joined the company immediately gets access to, you know, tens of thousands of documents that they just don't need. So being able to have that finer grain control allows us more ability to get to that least privilege condition that is our friend. Now, you obviously want to supplement that with accountability. And the story I always tell here is from the IRS, where the people pass the auditing exams. And yes, they're now an IRS auditor. And every, I'm told that every single day that people pass the exams, one of them immediately fails because the first thing they do is that they log on to the computer system and even if they were told not to, the first thing they look at is Britney Spears or Madonna's tax returns and their boss gets a message in their mailbox saying, this sensitive file was looked at and then they're out of the IRS and uh, looking at, um, you know, having an interesting talk with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So we, this key service scheme, this provides us a point where we can log all the access to the documents. And because each request for the other half of a recryption key is signed by the party wanting it on the device on which it's being downloaded, we've got a complete audit trail which is really good for accountability. So the mesh here is giving us really fine grain control. What else do we get out of it? Well, so far I've been talking about documents and I've been kind of assuming that people are going to, well, if you use the tool at the, as it is at the moment, what you would have to do is to get your Word document, save it out to disk, Encrypt it using the Mesh encryption tool and then upload it to the Mesh service where it can be downloaded. And that's obviously not a very satisfactory approach. It's obviously an approach that, you know, cannot last. So that is obviously something that needs to be eliminated by integrating the Mesh deeply into the Office suite, embed it into Microsoft Office, Office Libra, Open Office, and all those. Uh, so that's kind of like where I would like to be in, you know, two, three, four years time. But that's going to take a significant investment in time and, you know, quality assurance and, you know, groveling the low-level details of those applications. You know, that's going to require quite a bit of cash uh, to produce that. And so what can we do in the meantime, given that, uh, you know, we've got some elections coming up in 2020 and we don't want to have the situation that happened in 2016 where one candidate's Excel files with all the analytics from all the different states and all the different counties were stolen by the Russian FSB and given to her, uh, her opponent in return for, well, who knows what. So we want to be able to lock down those, we want to be able to encrypt those documents and protect them today even though we've not got that deep integration. And it turns out that there is a way that we can do that because it turns out that Word and Excel and PowerPoint and all the rest have a save as encrypted file format. So you can use a password to encrypt the document and the person on the other end 
needs the password to decrypt it. So that system's been there now for you know, 25 years, and for the last decade or so, it's been using real cryptography. It's been using AES, it's been using industrial strength cryptography, which is good, but it's still passwords. And so every single time somebody has sent me one of these uh, encrypted word files, either the password has been ridiculously short, you know, it's been noddy123, or they have sent it to me via email, which means that you know, all the security we get from encrypting the file is lost because you sent the key through the same channel. So as an interim solution to all this, what the Mesh allows us to do is to share passwords to documents shared through Group W independently of the documents themselves. So what will happen here is in order to share a document, um, Bob will issue the command, uh, will tell his mesh management tool, give me a share for election targets dot XLSX to group W at example.com. And back comes a password under which that document is to be encrypted. So Bob now cuts and pastes that password into his Excel and saves that document out. And now it has been encrypted under that password. And now when Carol wants to read that file, well, she has to know or guess or whatever that it's been encrypted to group W. And now she asks she brings up her mesh management tool and asks for password from election for election targets dot xlsx from group w at example dot com and the tool does all the decryption blob de blobification uh you know fetch locate whatever and pulls out the password that she needs to decrypt that file so it's not quite as fluid and not quite as easy to use as I would like. But you know what? It's pretty good, given that we don't need to change Word or Excel or PowerPoint or anything. So what we want to get to is ubiquitous encryption, so that every document is, by, is stored encrypted by default. And if it's just for Bob, well, by default, it will so save the document to Bob's long-term encryption group that shares the, the document between all of Bob's devices. Or if she, he decides to sh sh share it with a group, to the group um, decryption stuff. Uh, we want to be able to encrypt group chats so that all the messages in that conversation can be stored and retrieved at a later date. Conference calls voice, video, any data that is encrypted that we might want, any data that is sent should always be encrypted end to end. And if it is data that we want to store for any reason, it should be signed and thrown into a notary chain and it should be encrypted underneath some form of group encryption. So this provides us with the ability to establish the type of security that security labels are supposed to give in the US federal government, but really quite don't quite. So I've shown you in this video how we can apply group encryption to documents. What I want to show you in the next video is how we apply this technology to achieve a true end-to-end -end encrypted web. A web in which all the documents, all the data on the web service, all the web pages, all the images, all the comments that are uploaded into the comment forums, everything is encrypted end to end and the server cannot be breached because the server doesn't have anything it can decrypt. 
and I'll show you that next time. So thank you very much for watching. Please click like and please, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.